This is a outcome study for the National Health and Wellness Survey. And we, tr we looked at ADHD individuals who were not treated, patients who are on IR, patients who are on ER, and patients who are on ER and IR. And so what we're looking at, we're looking at those who are not treated versus those who are treated with various durations of action over the day. We started with about 8,500 patients. With the claims analysis, we came down to about 540 patients. And what did we find? This is the distribution for the different arms of the, of the study. The unmedicated group had twice as many outpatient visits and higher total annual direct costs. So that means that if you have ADHD and you're not being treated, you're an economic burden in the system. Not only that, some of that money is coming out of your own wallet. So it's expensive to not be treated for your ADHD. The comorbidities also complicated the ADHD. So if you had mental health comorbidities, you had a significantly poor quality of life component in the, in the mental health component of the quality of life measure. And also you had higher activity impairment. So again, comorbidity increases mortality. It decreases quality of life. It decreases activity involvement. And the conclusion was that longer duration of action formulations substantially reduce the economic cost of ADHD. The longer the duration of action, for as long as you can get it during the day, reduces the overall economic burden of ADHD for the patient, for the family, and for society, which is a justification for trying to get the duration of action and the control of ADHD symptoms under control for as long uh, of the day as you can. And you can cite this to patients who say, why do I need to take it uh, as often as you would like me to take it? 